This is five on your side at five, focused on you. A massive fire in Carlinville, Illinois. Hours ago, crews from multiple towns responded and firefighters battled flames for nearly eight hours. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. That fire started just before four this morning at an industrial site north of Carlinville. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay shows us what crews were up against. In the early morning hours of Easter Sunday, the Carlinville Fire Department got the call they never want to receive. We were paged out at 355 this morning on John Deere Lane uh, for a commercial structure fire fully involved uh, with explosions. As soon as Chief Jess McKee arrived and saw the extent of the damage, he immediately called for extra help. We ended up with 18 departments, five ladder trucks operating on the scene. We had to shuttle water in. We're in an area uh, with very few hydrants, so we had to shuttle water. Uh, to the scene. The building, which is now ash and rubble, was once a storage place that many businesses used to hold equipment. We had multiple um, businesses throughout here that lost pretty much everything uh, in the fire this morning. This is what the scene looked like right around noon on Sunday. The smell of smoke still filled the air here, and as you can see behind me, there is basically nothing left of that building. It took fire crews nearly eight hours to put the fire completely out, and this cleanup is far from over. We had uh, community members uh, respond with food, beverages and stuff, businesses to help us out to, to keep us going throughout the uh, the morning. While the loss is great, the community showed actions fitting to the Christian holiday about what it means to help their neighbor. We're, we're doing the best we can to get it put out and get everybody back home for Easter. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. The good news tonight, we're told no one was injured in the fire. The cause still under investigation. This Tuesday, voters will decide on two different propositions from the Metropolitan Sewer District. One of the ballot propositions would authorize the district to increase the residential property tax rate to help fund solutions to flood issues. The second allows MSD to borrow $750 million to fund the next four years of mandatory wastewater improvements. The goal? To reduce sewage overflows into local waterways. And when this is all said and done, this will greatly improve the sanitary sewer system in this entire area as well as getting two pump stations and a wastewater treatment plant that are currently in flood floodplains um, removed. And our Andy Craw will have much more on these propositions at 10 o'clock tonight. It was a pleasant Easter Sunday as many churches in our area held services and Easter egg hunts. Forest Park also hosted an Easter car show today. The Horseless Carriage Club of Missouri had dozens of vintage cars on display in the upper Muni parking lot. And it was a beautiful day in Forest Park, but we are in a weather alert moving into Monday. Weather First Meteorologist Gary Frank is here to tell us about some severe weather moving in, Gary. Yeah, I think Monday is going to be a busy day, so we'll enjoy today as it has been very pleasant, warm and windy. You'll start to see these clouds that have been a little bit more vertical over the last couple of hours after we started out with mostly sunny conditions and temperatures got to around 80 degrees, if not exceeding 80 in many spots like Lake St. Louis and Washington. But as we look to the north, you can see one storm system that's providing at least some minor severe weather, and that's where we're looking at for tonight's at least let's call it a threat because I think as this warm front settling in, you can see that really north of Bowling Green. That's where I think that any development later on tonight will be. This is not a huge threat, but the higher threats are definitely in Northern Pike County, really mostly out of our area. It's not out of the question, but it's something that we'll monitor over the next several hours. So as we watch that, I think temps stay pretty mild into the overnight hours, staying dry for now, but on Monday, we are going to see maybe a few showers and storms early that could be marginally severe. We're talking maybe some larger hail, but as the main front moves in after sunset, that's when all types of severe weather are impossible, including tornadoes and some larger hail as well. We'll de detail some of the things about tomorrow and what we can expect and when we're going to see that all finally clear out. Gary, thanks. Well, as we close out Women's History Month, we're highlighting a nonprofit created by women for women. The Women's Exchange has been in St. Louis for over 100 years. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay shows us how the nonprofit has impacted lives in our community for the past century. The Women's Exchange was founded by women for women. The original group of ladies that got together wanted to help out other women who had fallen on hard times financially. That was back in the late 1800s. It was a way for women to earn a living by creating and selling handmade goods and heirloom garments, sometimes in secret without their husband's knowledge. This group of ladies ran the store, they ran the tea room, and they would 
sell these items for sale and be able to give the proceeds back to these women who could then maintain their families. Nearly 150 years later, that mission still holds true, and it's now a model for others as it's a part of the National Federation of Women's Exchanges. We are one of the last few standing uh, women's exchanges in the country. Known widely for its iconic cherry dress, the signature piece was made famous by people like Jackie Kennedy, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Jenna Bush. We have sent it to dignitaries, celebrities, influencers, uh, just the idea that this dress gets to travel the world and show up on Christmas cards and paintings is, is just as important as it is the work that went behind it. The meticulous artisanship that goes into the infamous dress is handmade by many immigrants today. It's all a part of the nonprofit's immigrant and refugee training program, which helps people transition into the workforce. It's a place um, that helps out when you need the most and immigrating here and starting work, it's really hard. It's something Jasmina Jermic knows all too well. Immigrating to the States from Bosnia, Jermic started working at the Women's Exchange when she was in college and never left, now serving as the nonprofit's finance director. And for somebody who has immigrated and been through the war and moved, I also lived in Germany. Just, just being at the place that has existed for so many years, it's really amazing. And that's just scratching the surface of women the nonprofit impacts daily. It also has a tea room anyone can enjoy and a free commercial kitchen for women entrepreneurs. We are able to offer this beautiful environment um, for people to learn job skill, for people to feel at home while they're going through a personal crisis is truly our, our greatest gift that we can offer the St. Louis community. It's a gift centered in values that are truly timeless. I think upholding the standards that people remember and being there for people's great days and rainy days is just something that's really important. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. The beginning of a long road to recovery. The latest on the Baltimore Bridge collapse coming up.